And let me just say this real quick while I'm waiting for another question to come through. Like, we got to get it out of our head that love takes time. Real love takes... No, it doesn't. Not real connection. It doesn't. And again, if we're looking at it from a spiritual perspective, there's a, there's a saying or a belief or a principle that things happen in the spirit before they happen in the physical. All right? And I believe that, that connection is a, is a spiritual experience. It is essentially your spirit recognizing its match, recognizing its partner. Y'all were matched in the spirit before y'all even saw each other in the physical. So it does not need all this time to figure it out. That, that's why, again, when you survey and when you sit people down who have experienced connection, it was pretty much instantaneous. It was fast as hell. It did not take months. It didn't even take weeks. You know what I'm saying? It was immediate because, again, it is something that's coming from a very a, a much deeper place than just what we're seeing on the surface. Is bad credit or debt a shallow deal breaker? Um, I don't want to use the word shallow, but I'm going to use the word misguided. And let me be more specific in, in saying it's misguided. It is misguided only if you're looking at it from a very superficial perspective. Meaning, if you meet someone and their credit score is 540, right? And you stop there to say, oh, credit score 540? Nah, I ain't dealing with this person. Done, right? That's misguided because if you understand credit, you got it, then you understand that there can be various things going on here that led to the 540 that don't actually speak to this person being responsible financially and things of that nature. So for let me give one example. Let's just say this person has been paying their credit cards, been paying their bills, right? But they have a, a medical bill that happened to them that was astronomical and they never paid their medical bill. And, the, and, and let's just say it, it wasn't supposed to be like that or whatever the case may be. Either way, the medical bill gets put on their, their collections and the medical bill drops their credit score. But when you actually evaluate their credit history, they show that everything else they've been paying they're not, they don't have a consistent pattern of letting bills just go, of, of not owning up to their responsibilities. They have a very isolated incident that has dropped them their credit worthiness in the eyes of the system. This is why I don't believe in just stopping at, oh, what your credit score is. I, and really, me personally, I don't even care about your damn credit score, but that's a whole nother conversation. Nothing wrong if that's important to you. I right? know I'm not saying it should or shouldn't be important to you. What I am saying is credit, credit and, and finances require a deeper look. We have to understand what's actually going on. And I'm going to say one more thing about the debt. Even with the debt, there's multiple types of debt. If this person has a lot of debt due to, let's say they have a huge business loan. All right. So they have debt, but the debt is for the purpose of generating income and generating revenue. That's not the same thing as... This person running up credit cards for nonsense and, and again, not owning up to their responsibilities. So I, I do believe that we don't, enough people don't understand the bigger picture when it comes to finances and to just go off of a number is not giving you the whole story. And one more example real quick. Hell, what if their parents, some people got parents who jacked them up and jacked up their credit before they even had a chance to, to make it work for them. Is it fair to hold it against them that they had parents who screwed them over? Nah. So I think you got, you got to look further into that. Okay, I, I feel led to answer this question. It says, why can't women truly forgive? Um, so one, I, I do think there are plenty of women who have truly forgiven or fully forgiven. But what does come to mind when you ask that question is, there are a lot of women who hold on to unforgiveness as a way to manage their emotions. And what I mean by that is, for example, um, let's say a woman felt very, whether she was or wasn't, felt deeply in love or into a man, right? And now this man makes a mistake. And it may have been a genuine mistake, but it hurt her to her core. Her not wanting to forgive may be her defense mechanism 
to not allow herself to fall back into that situation with that man. Whether she should or should not allow herself to go back is a, is a different discussion. But the point is she may see holding on to unforgiveness as a way to keep herself in check. That's not healthy because we should always forgive. And if, and if there's an issue with falling back into a situation because you forgave, because listen, you can forgive and not let people back into your life. You can forgive and not continue the relationship. We have to understand that. But I have seen many scenarios where a woman may, again, just hold on to that or even paint a more negative picture of that person or that man because she's trying to make it easier for her to stay away. Even in some cases where it may be that she has a genuine connection with this dude. It may be that he never really did anything wrong. But she's scared as hell to embrace this connection. She is scared as hell to be vulnerable to this man. And because of that fear, she tries to hold on to something negative to help her stay away. If I can convince myself that he's this and that, then I don't have to embrace the deeper feeling that I, I have towards him and this connection that scares the crap out of me. That happens a lot too. And I'm willing to say there are people on this live who you know this applies to. I don't know who you are, but I feel in my spirit that there's some, some of you, multiple of you on here that felt that one to your core. Do you think a relationship can work if the two are spiritually not on the same level and one doesn't want to grow anymore spiritually? All right. So that second part is the key. I do think... Because when people say we're not on the same level spiritually, I think they're evaluating it from their perception of what is an acceptable level, so to speak. So let's just say you have a man who he prays and he may even read scripture, but he don't really go to church, right? He don't really engage in certain activities with the church or whatever. Whereas the other woman, she may be heavy in the church and she'll say, well, he's not on my level. Well, no, no. The issue is he don't he don't worship like you do. He don't he don't walk the same way you do but that doesn't mean his level is any less or or less value than yours there's a difference there but the key to what you asked was not on the same level and has no desire to grow i don't care what level people are perceived to be on because we have to understand that uh as as believers we we all have a different process that we got to go through when it comes to god and our walks are very specific to us you know what i'm saying and you know as long as god says we should be together then it doesn't matter how it looks however i don't know any person of god who's walking with god who doesn't want to grow or isn't trying to grow like that just goes against being on the right track being on the right path like yo we're gonna all have our struggles we're gonna all slip we are all flawed we're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall off track at times. Like falling off track ain't even the problem. It's not trying to get back on. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not trying to get better. And again, we, we will have moments where we take 10 steps forward and five steps back. That's, that's normal. We are human beings. And, and that's why it's also important to not be so quick to judge what we determine to be acceptable spiritual levels. Because yo, like... None of us is perfect. And you and some people, they quick to like judge someone else. Like, oh, well, they do this and they do that. Oh, well, this person's in the club, blah, blah, blah. Okay, maybe, maybe they haven't gotten into that place yet where they don't walk that way. Or maybe there's a reason for them to even... I mean, who knows? That ain't for you to be judging. Like, I don't... I just don't believe in judging nobody. I believe in when it comes to relationships, God, do you want me with this person? That's it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and do we respect each other's walk? Do we respect each other's place in this process? Are we encouraging each other along in this process? Are we helping each other? Are we both pulling each other closer to God or further away from it? That's the thing. Like, yo, I ain't judging you for where you at, but you ain't gonna try to pull me away either. <laughs> you know, from God that is. It's like, yo, respect my spirituality but I understand we, we're not going to be the same. Like, that's just, I don't, I don't think that's reasonable in a lot of cases. And I, I feel the need, to, it's hitting my spirit, so I feel the need to say it. Some of you, some of you I got to say some of y'all. Some of y'all are choosing your partner spiritually 
based on how they look on the surface. Oh, well, he a pastor or she a this and whatever. And for all you know, that's the devil in disguise. Now, again, I'm not saying all men of God, pastors, whatever, are devils. I'm saying that specific person who you used your eyes, all right, and your own brain to evaluate and everything looked good on the surface and their level looked acceptable was actually setting you up for the worst years of your life because you leaned on your perception of things, not on God's. How are we talking about we people of God and we, we want to figure it out for ourselves? We're not, we not talking to God. You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on now. And someone said, no strip club. <laughs> Yo, listen, I'm pro I'm, I, I know this may sound ridiculous to some of y'all, but even if someone is going to... Uh, listen, you got to understand something. We all come from different walks of life, all right? And so, the, you know, I'm going to expose this about myself, all right? I, I was raised in Miami, and once upon a time, I wasn't into God like that, all right? I was not, somebody brought me the Bible, I'm like, get the hell out of my face with that, okay? When I was in Miami, oh, I was in the strip club. I'm not even going to lie to y'all, any of my people from Miami who know me. Yo, back then, I was in the strip club. I didn't see nothing wrong with it. Now, again, someone would have looked at me and said, oh, look at this man. He ain't this, he that, whatever, whatever, whatever. But... Where I was, that didn't, where I was didn't determine where I was headed. Didn't determine what, what, what the plan was in my life. You know what I'm saying? And even if someone walks into a strip club now who is of God, listen, man, even, again, you know how they say judge the sin, not the sinner. Yo, if someone who loves God has a moment where they're like, yo, you know what? I need a break and yo, I'm going back to a strip club. Just because they're having that moment doesn't define who they are. It doesn't mean they're this horrible person of God. And y'all got to remember, not to get too biblical right now, but listen, the people Jesus was hanging around wasn't the, 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 the highly holy and all that kind of stuff. So I don't know like, why we think it's impossible for people of God to even be in certain environments and God not be working in that environment for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? Hell, what if, <laughs> I know that may sound ridiculous to some of y'all, but what if that person being that strip club that night turns into somebody else turning to God in some way? Yes, even in their moment of breaking character or whatever could lead to something greater and it could be a lesson learned from them. We got to stop judging so much. Stop judging. It ain't for you to know sometimes. You know what I'm saying? If anything, just if, if you think people are operating in a way that they shouldn't, just pray for them. That's it. Just pray. Just pray that God's going to make it work somehow. Just pray that they will be get more in touch with God. But let, let's stop with the judging stuff. Someone said Jesus was in the hoods. For real. Like, <laughs> come on now. Come on. So if y'all see me in the strip club, don't say, no, nah, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing, but I'm just saying though. Uh, let's see. So it's a now I'm a judge a strip clubber. <laughs> oh man. What do you think about a man who is almost 40, still living with his parents, no desire to move out? Do you believe this is the reason he doesn't desire a serious relationship? He don't desire nothing serious, it sounds like. This man, I'm not even going to judge the man for living at his, his parents' house if there was a plan in place. But you 40, you ain't got no plan, no desire to move out, no nothing. I just think it sounds like he doesn't want anything that requires responsibility. He doesn't want anything that requires him to put forth a certain level of effort and work. That's why he stays at his mom's house. That's why, or his parents' house. He don't want his own bills. He don't want to deal with all that. He don't want, you know what I'm saying? I, I think he just, he really doesn't want anything serious and that requires much of him. And so he just stays there. And I don't even know you, but I know you ain't going to be happy with that. So if you are in any way considering this man, I think you need to just walk away. Age difference, 10 years, or can there be a, a connection or not? So listen, I'm a firm believer that age does, age does not 
uh, determine connection. It does not determine even compatibility. I think people are too quick to assume like age doesn't define someone's maturity. It doesn't define someone's wisdom. It only makes it more likely or less likely for them to have acquired certain things. All right. Now, of course, we always want to keep it legal. I, ha I feel the need to always mention that. Keep it legal. All right. But outside of that, as long as we're keeping it there and we're talking about two adults, um, there's nothing wrong with it. Whether it be older woman, older man, whatever, there's nothing wrong with it. Like, yo, again, speaking as someone who I've spoken to thousands of people in my lifetime. I mean, hell, maybe even more because of how many followers I got. But I can tell you I've met people who were in their 40s. and I've met people who were 21, 22, who, had, who were more wise, more mature, had their stuff more together than people in their 40s or 50s. Like it, you just you you should not assume. Again, the age will make it more likely or less likely. Like let's talk about men. If the guy is twenty one, it's less likely he has fully matured. It's less likely that he has acquired financial stability. Of course, it is less likely, but that does not mean every twenty one year old man does not possess maturity, wisdom, or even financial stability. You see know what I'm saying? And again, the same thing goes for women. Same way, someone could be 40-something. As the question that was just asked, that joker is, no disrespect, that man <laughs> is 40, living with his moms, don't want to do nothing about it, ain't trying to move out. Him being 40 did not make him more willing to embrace responsibility. It did not make him more financially stable. It changed nothing. So age does not define it. So going back to the original question, can you still find connection with the age difference? Yes, you absolutely can. And I think, I know people have their preferences. I understand that. I'm not trying to um, say you can't have your preferences, right? But I do think that sometimes we box ourselves in and we limit the potential of what we can have in our life because we're, we're holding on to the constructs that don't really speak to happiness, love, genuine connection. So before we continue, I want to tell you about this great offer that you can get now on Audible. When it comes to audio entertainment, it makes sense to choose Audible. It's the home for stories told by the biggest stars like Ethan Hawke, Kerry Washington, and Kevin Hart. It's home to epic adventures, chilling mysteries, and can't miss comedies as well as all of my personal books. Audible is the home of storytelling. So let your imagination soar with audiobooks, podcasts, and originals. Audible has an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre, from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs and so much more. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. Members also get full access to a growing selection of including audiobooks or Audible originals and podcasts. And so, again, you can also check out one of my best-selling books on Audible. So let Audible help you discover new ways to laugh, be inspired, or be entertained. New members can try it for free for 30 days. Visit audible.com forward slash Stefan Speaks or text Stefan Speaks to 500-500. That's audible.com slash Stefan Speaks or text Stefan Speaks to 500-500 to try Audible free for 30 days. Men realize you're the one when it's too late and you've decided to move on without them. Do you try it once they realize or do they not? All right, so number one, not everyone is realizing you're the one, as in genuinely the one. What they're realizing is you were the best they had to that point, and everything else that they've had was trash, and so now they want the best thing back. That's not the reason to be entertaining somebody because now they realize, oh, you were the best thing I could have had. No. Your willingness to entertain them has to be dependent on do we really have a connection all right, and if we did, I would question why it would take them this long to realize you were the one. But you know, there, there's exceptions to every rule. So let's just say that ha you have to be able to say that you feel there's a genuine connection. And whatever was an issue in the first go round with them, 
Has those things been corrected? Like, I don't give a damn if you think now that I'm the one. No. Are, have you evolved? Are we going to be able to have a better relationship? Have you corrected the problems? If not, then I don't care what your realization is. You still ain't going to be the right person to be with or it still ain't time to get in a relationship with them. How to let a guy know you're interested without coming off as masculine. <laughs> like, yo, one, a, comp a, a physical compliment is always a nice little shot to shoot. That's kind of not, it may not be as blatant as, hey, I'm interested, let's talk. But it shows some level of interest typically. You know what I'm saying? Um, coming off as masculine, though, I, I, I want to speak to that real quick. It's not about you presenting your interest. It's not about you flirting that makes it masculine. Being Coming off as masculine is coming off too uh, dominant or overbearing the situation. Like, yo, what's up? What's your number? Let's talk. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, that would be coming off masculine. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, if you are, again, leading throughout the situation, that can come off as masculine. But let me tell you this, though. We, we always... We look at what people do through the lens of how much we're interested in them or not. Meaning, as a, for example, as a woman, you could have 10 dudes right now sliding your DMs, right? And, and 10 of those dudes, or nine of those, they all 10 of them say, hey, beautiful, okay? Nine of them, you're not interested in, you don't like at all. So when you look at those first nine, you're like, oh my gosh, these dudes are so annoying, they're thirsty, they're this, whatever. If the 10th dude <laughs> is a guy that you're actually interested in, you might be like, oh, that's so cute. Oh, I'm flattered. You will look at his attempt completely different. Not because he said anything different than the other nine dudes, but because you actually have interest in him and like him. So it's the same thing. When I see women say, oh, no, if you men don't like a woman that approaches them or shows interest, bull, you know what? Like, hell, are y'all serious? I don't know any man who's had a woman slide in his DMs that he liked, that he was interested, and he was like, nah, I can't do it. She, she slid in my DMs first. It ain't going to work. Like, <laughs> what? It, it's, he only takes issue because he wasn't really interested. But if he's interested, he's going to see it as an opportunity. Now, again, I'm not saying slide a dude's DM and be like, yo, give me your number. We going out next week. Like, that's too much. <laughs> that's too much. But sliding in there, saying something, shooting your shot, hey, I'm interested, whatever, that's cool. Or even if you just say, hey, we should link up sometime. That's, that's kind of a, it's, it's very direct, but it's still kind of subtle because it still leaves it on him to have to say, yes. You know what? Let's make that happen. What's your number? Boom, boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? So I think it, that's all it is. That's all it is. But if you're interested... And, and let me say this. being in, When I tell y'all, don't be afraid to shoot your shot and show interest, that does not mean it will always work in your favor. <laughs> so what I mean is, listen, I don't know who y'all interested in. I don't know if that man's going to be interested back. So I, I'm not promising that you giving a compliment or, or showing some interest is going to equate to an actual date or numbers exchanging, right? I, all I'm saying is, though, that there's nothing wrong with it. And that if there is interest in the return, he'll jump on it. And, and, if there's in, and if he is available to even accept the interest, please understand that sometimes the man not taking your advances is because maybe he can't. Like, maybe he's actually in a situation that, you know, doesn't allow him. He's in a relationship, whatever the case may be. So he still likes it, but he can't do anything with it. Somebody said, I'm not doing it either. <laughs> some people can't take rejection. Yeah, listen, and, and that's the thing. I mean, I understand some people don't want to take that chance. I get it, but you, you what, what they say, you miss all the shots you don't shoot. So it's on you. It's up to you. Okay, I got to address this. Or he thinks you're going to give it up, so he accepts too. All right, listen. Just because you show interest in a man doesn't mean he automatically thinks you're going to give it up. And even if, let's just say that's the scenario. You slide in his DMs, you give him a compliment. He's like, damn, she looked good. You know what? I think she's going to want to give, give me some. So let me respond, right? Y'all talk, y'all go on a date. He makes an attempt. 
Just don't give him some. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, who cares if he thought that? You still have a choice not to do it. If you don't do it, cool. Now, if you don't do it and he stops talking to you, now we know for sure that that's all he was aiming for and that's all he thought he was going to get out of this situation. But some of y'all be like projecting these negative perceptions onto dudes who he wasn't even thinking like that. He wasn't even, I mean, listen, I'm not saying he ain't hoping you're going to give him something. I'm just saying that doesn't mean he thought, oh man, she, she thinks I look good, so she automatically going to give it to me. Come on now. Chill with all that. Chill. I'm just looking for one more question. Again, one more time, receivingmyblessings.com. Click the link in the comment section or uh, go to my DM, slide in my DM. Well, no. <laughs> DM me <laughs> so I can send you um, the link. <laughs> oh, man. What if she did give him some? Then what? I mean, I don't know. It depends on the situation. Sometimes the woman gives some and that's where it ends. Sometimes it continues from there. It depends. I mean, my thing is, if you're going to give it, just make sure you are comfortable giving. Listen, we can sit here and talk about waiting till marriage being best, especially from a spiritual perspective, right? But I, I understand we, many of us, many of us have or will engage uh, before marriage sexually. And so what I tell women, though, is like, yo, just don't do it if you're not comfortable. Don't do it if, if you're not OK with whatever does happen next. Like if you're giving it up, hoping he's going to like you more, that's the wrong thing. If you're giving it up, hoping that that will make this turn into a relationship, that's the wrong thing. If you do it, it's because you are comfortable that it's what you desire at that moment. You are OK with whatever happens next. You have found peace within yourself to do it for whatever your reasons are outside of an expectation of him giving you something as far as relationship or love in return. That's where a lot of women shoot themselves in the foot. And there's a lot of women who lay down with a dude before they're actually comfortable or okay with it or have a genuine desire for it. Some of y'all are just doing it because you think you're supposed to or that you should or I don't want him to not like me anymore. Like that's the wrong reasons. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you're okay with it and that you're comfortable. And I have to add this. If you lay down with that man when you're not really comfortable with doing it, please understand that there's a very good chance your performance is going to be negatively impacted. And with that, please understand that some men will use that against you. And I'm sorry for laughing, but I'm just going to keep it real with y'all. Sometimes, because I, and this is not to to be harsh or insulting to anyone. But a lot of women swear their stuff is good. Every woman, their stuff is the best, right? And y'all don't realize that in that performance, in that engagement, it was not that great. And part of the reason why is because you were not really comfortable. You were not truly okay. You did it for, you did it for reasons that you shouldn't have and you don't realize how that impacts the way that you are, are present in that moment, all right? So it's important that you don't do it if you're not really feeling it, all right? And be honest about that. And if a man isn't going to like you or want to deal with you because you want to wait or you need more time or whatever the case may be, then clearly that dude only wants to sleep with you. And if that's all he wants and you want more, then that's your sign right there to keep it moving, all right? Now, if that's all you want too, that's your decision. I ain't judging you either way. But just make sure you know what the hell you want to do and that you're okay with it. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. And I know this may not be what you want to hear at the moment, but a lot of times a breakup is a blessing in disguise. And, you know, we, we without knowing more details from this situation and what may have led to the broken engagement, 